Hello. Once again, it's Dr. Gail Randall um, is appearing at <laughs> six o'clock on a Friday. So if you're joining me, you're my date. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. I always love these talks and I love you guys. So I really appreciate it. Today's an and interestingly, I mean, I've been doing a series on regeneration, if you've been following me. So, this is the fourth in my regeneration series. And originally it was going to be another topic, but I've been texting my lovely, wonderful, talented, technologic advisor, Sarah G Gap, who I want to give credit to. And... Um, since I, t I texted her so much stuff, I guess it was, it was just too much to know which one I meant. And my topic changed overnight. So I think this is kind of cool because may maybe we should do that. Maybe we should have random topics for teachers and see how much they know. <laughs> so I didn't prepare for this really, but um, it is something that does interest me that I do want to talk about. I want it's my talk is called health is like an iceberg what you see on the surface on the tip on the top of the iceberg is what is a result of what's underneath which is your subconscious and that's where all your fears wounds unaddressed issues hide so if you have anxiety and fear that's where they are so we need to figure out how to address those because they cause illness. Anxiety causes stress, stress causes inflammation, which causes chronic disease. So we're gonna talk a lot about that, different ways to look at it. My other credits today are Dr. Isaac, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Isaac Elias, and because he taught me about alarmins in the stress process, and that's a very key thing, which causes inflammation. Janet Montgomery, who I recently did a podcast on, on Soul Stories. Check it out. It's wonderful. She taught me about the metaphor of the iceberg. So I, I took it and ran with it because I really see all kinds of ways that this can help us. She's a hypnotherapist and an NLP therapist. She's wonderful. And you can find her on my Soul Stories podcast. Most um, podcasts, almost all major podcast stations carry it. We're in our second season and we're, we put out one a week, so we're really doing well. And I uh, also want to credit Dr. Patricia Didlo. I don't know if that's how you say your name, but she you can find her on Instagram. And Mark Hyman, mainly because we're always bouncing off each other and I seem to get good ideas from those two people. And I'm not plagiarizing them, but I am thanking them for triggering my imagination. So, so our talk again is the fourth in my regenerative series, Health is Like an Iceberg. What you see on the tip or the top is manifesting what is really under the water. And those things that are under the water in your subconscious that you're not addressing that are wounds or fears or um, things that you really want to keep hidden, maybe even from yourself, are going to rule you, are going to cause disease until you do address them. There's another guy I want to give credit to because I'm a student of Don Miguel Ruiz. He wrote The Mastery of Love, and he has, you know, the metaphor of the person who's wounded taking a jacket and how wounds can change your behavior completely. So we'll develop all these defense mechanisms to keep those subconscious fears down there. So we, because we're afraid, we don't, we, we don't, either we don't know we have them or we know we have them and we don't want to have anything to do with them. So we wrap our magic jackets around us and so, and don't let anybody touch us in those places because it could trigger our wounds. When in fact, what we need to do is open that jacket, uh, you know, look at it. It's our responsibility to deal with those things and become a better version of our own self. If we deal with those things, 
we become more balanced and the, the anxiety, the worry, the fear goes away, and which actually is the cause of disease. Anxiety and fear cause stress. There's nothing more damaging than stress chemicals in your body. The stress chemicals, you know, are elevated flight or fight neurotransmitters, norepinephrine, epinephrine, raises your cortisol. A lot of you know these things. And, but also something called alarmins. Alarmins are proteins that directly trigger the inflammatory cascade, releasing cytokines and destroying our tissues, destroying our brain, destroying our guts, our whole bodies. So, and so what we want to do is get the body to, to make these things called protectants, things that will protect the alarmins from triggering the inflammatory cascade. And you do that by getting your flight or fight neurotransmitters down, getting the alarmins down, and being in a state of calm, being in a state of trust. The first step, really, to all of this is, is wanting and knowing that you can be well. Trusting. Trusting your body and trusting your process that you can be well. So if, no matter what you have, if you have rashes or headaches or abdominal pain or, you know, it, you, you go to source, you get, go to someone that can help you find the root cause, but a lot of the root cause is this, is a, a mental health issue. You know, it's down under the water, in the depths, in the dark. And a lot of times people don't want to get it out because they're afraid. But once they do, they're so liberated. If they get it out and they deal with it, it is so liberating. You, you pull back so much energy. You transform into a better version of you. So let's talk some more about how that might happen. Like I said, the first step and the most important thing is attitude. And that's with any illness or anything in life. You gotta believe that you can do it. You gotta believe and trust your body and your process. Having a good attitude I've seen make, can make the difference between life and death. You know, if people I've, I've seen, you know, that could, that should be, could be, shoulda, coulda, woulda, uh, completely curable, but they don't, they have the attitude that they won't be, and they don't accept it, and they progress according with that thought, thought process. The Buddha slipped into my meditation, my vision, the other day, if you, if you will, and Buddha said, what you think, what you feel, you become. What you feel, you attract. What you imagine, you create. So let's say that again. So that's why it's so important to be positive. It's so important to have a good attitude. And Buddha, of course, great great leader, teacher, divine, said, what you think, you become. What you feel, you attract. You know, it's often said, what you fear, you, you attract to you. What you imagine, you create. So, key words, become, attract, and create. So, po having a positive attitude will create wellness, will create wellness in us. And that's what we want, that's what we're after. Again, that tip of the iceberg with its rashes and headaches and pimples and you know different things is a result of the fears and the wounds and the um, hidden anxieties beneath the water. No, and by the way, no amount of anxiety or worrying or fear ever, ever fixed anything. So just move, try to move away from that. And it's, it is stress that's driving it. And so you got to do things that can handle stress. So it's very damaging to your health. It's very damaging to happiness. Um, 
in in blue zones i talk a lot about blue zones because i just love this it's an area there's five areas on earth where people live to be centurions on a regular basis and healthy so they have a very good health span so there's a difference between lifespan and health span so what we want to do is have a really good health span so that's living for a long time and being healthy if you live for a long time and you feel crummy you know that's not that's not a good deal so we want a good health span so if you look at these five different blue zones they're, they're scattered all over the globe one is in loma linda here in california one one is in japan and okinawa there's a few in italy and what they have in common in addition, you know, in addition to their longevity and their lifespan, their long lifespan, is mental balance. Now, how do they accomplish that? It's achieved through, and if you, I did a Venn diagram, you know, where you do circles and you see what things have in common. So I did a Venn diagram of blue zones and what they have in common is spirituality, not necessarily in this order, um, a sense of community, strong women leaders. I like that one. Um, special, um, so, I'm sorry, social activities, physical activity and constant physical activity, family first, and no or little sense of urgency. I think that's huge. I think it's a sense of urgency that is the most damaging to us. Got to be there, got to run, I have a meeting, you know, and a few minutes isn't going to kill anybody. So try to be calm. Know they can't start without you and, you know, live your life. Live your life. It's your life. Try to reduce your sense of urgency. Also key is, is, is nature. One of the ways the therapies is nature, and they have all these blue zones have in common that they love going to nature, they walk everywhere, and they have a lot of friends. As we go through life, maybe you've noticed too, you need a lot of friends and real friends. You need real friends, meaning people that are really going to be at your back. And after a while, you can feel the difference between. A friend that may not be so real and a friend that can be real. If you stand up for someone and they equally stand up for you, it's called reciprocity. That's your real friend. So that's what you're looking for. So we have to take responsibility. It's our job to take responsibility for these thought viruses, if you will. These things beneath the water. These things in the darkness may have happened to us before, or maybe things we're carrying around that don't even belong to us, that came from our parents or some experience in kindergarten or something like that. It's maybe a painful event, but we, it's our job to resolve them, to shine the light on them and work through them to make us the best version of ourselves as we can be. We have to take responsibility for our life and part of that is dealing with these things under the water in the lower part of the iceberg. If you don't take time to work through your most difficult traumas and experiences, as I said before, indicated, they will hold you ransom for your whole life. And it's not fun because they start causing these chemical changes this, this stress situation in your body will change your gut flora. And most of you know about the gut by looking at my Instagram. Everybody knows. I'm a gastroenterologist, but everybody seems to know about the gut now. But it's important to have the right bacteria. And eating poorly or stressing out kills the right bacteria. And that lays the ground for the wrong bacteria to get in there and get inflamed and seep into your body and cause chronic disease. It's, it's, it's convincing to me, and I am convinced, that you know the food system is the main cause of gut problems, 
but that's completely not lurk, looking at the, the fact that we all have these stresses, these traumas. I mean, we listen, I live on planet Earth. If you don't think you have any, call me or DM me because I want to find out what planet you live on. Because we've, we not only have stresses on a regular basis, but we've had, we've had COVID. We have the news constantly yelling at us about vax, don't vax, mask, don't mask, all this stuff. And, you know, you need to take a break from it. You need to take a break from it, a pause. You need to take a pause. You need to go to nature. You need to meditate. You need to pray or visualize to get to these problems or get a helper. Maybe get someone like Janet that can take you there in a hypnotic situation or, you know, whatever works for you. I mean, what the standard medical process is, is to give drugs and use psychotherapy. Well, those are fine, but that's not going to cut it because neither drugs or psychotherapy really get to this root cause. It's not enough. So we need to treat the body and the gut to get to the brain. You know, it's it, the, the brain and the body are so connected and we can't fully treat the brain and the emotions, which are also in the gut, without treating the body. So, you know, it's all those things those blue zone people do that I just alluded to. Exercise, spend time with your family and your friends and go to nature and walk and, and eat good food and eat organic food or regenerative food. Don't eat the sad American diet because if you do, that's going to make it worse. The sad American diet, which is full of glyphosate and chemicals and, and it affects your gut and your whole body, causes cancer, everything else, inflammation, that is not what we need to eat. And that food, is, I am convinced, is what is the cause of most chronic diseases in our globe. However, again, it's not taking into account the mental illness part, that's huge. It's huge. It just takes over everything. So we need to address it as part of regeneration. If we leave it out, we're not, we're not accomplishing a complete picture. So what foods influence stress? I mean, a lot of you may know this, but um, hi, nice waves. Thank you guys. Um, sugary drinks. Are the worst or sugar we're all born addicted to sugar because somewhere some monkey back when we were involved found the sugar which is probably this much in a hundred mile radius and was faster getting up the tree and got away from the lion and then maybe another monkey and anyway it became an advantage an evolutionary advantage but now it's it's like the opposite it's an evolutionarily disadvantage there's always the candy bars by the checkout stand in the grocery store. Grab one. Eat me. Have me. Because the more sugar you eat, the more you want it. It lights up a place in your brain called your nucleus accumens. That's your addiction center. And then you want more. The more you eat, the more you want. And what happens with that sugar? Triggers inflammation. Makes it worse. If you're anxious, you become more anxious. If you're worried, you become more worried. And then you're eating the sugar that's driving it and driving the inflammation on more than one level. So definitely sugary stuff and also refined carbohydrates, meaning bread, pasta, white rice, things like that, that raise your sugar level and raise your hemoglobin A1C. That pushes you towards diabetes and that's a disadvantage. That's not an advantage. They make breads now that are made out of whole, unrefined grains. They're delicious. They're organic. That's the kind of bread you should eat if you want to eat bread. If you want to eat pasta, they have pastas made out of chickpeas and lentils. Delicious and not so glycemic. The other main factor in our society, in our population, and in pushing diabetes and obesity is conventionally raised meat. It's not only bad for the planet, increasing the carbon 
layer because of the crops we grow to feed the cows and plus we're feeding them corn so it makes them full of omega-6s which are inflammatory which then kill us cause heart disease cause diabetes you know it's not sustainable it's not a good way to go so you want to if you're going to eat meat you want to eat regenerative meat regenerative grown meat is absolutely the best it's full of phytonutrients from the grasses that they eat the cows are grown like the buffaloes roam. They only eat the grass about halfway down, and then they're rotated. It's biomimicry. It's the way the buffalo used to do. They'd graze here, the predators would come, they'd change, they'd graze over here, and so forth. they come through once a year. And now that's how they, they rotate the cows, through the hectares of land. They don't get back to that first hectare of land, and all they eat is grain, uh, grass. They eat no grain, and so they don't have any toxins, in them and they don't have any chemicals in them no glyphosates and they're full of phytonutrients and they're happy cows until one day they come to become meat i guess so anyway it's better than being in a feedlot and being miserable and being prodded and pushed into trucks and you know all of that stuff but conventional meat has been shown it was about the time they came out with fast food stores when obesity just went crazy. And it's not just high fructose, high uh, fructose syrup in the drinks. It's the meat. Cereals, you know, most of them are just sugar. So try not to eat those as well. So those are the foods that influence stress by making it worse. Well, what makes it better? Omega-3 fatty acids. So although, you know, the... The, the sea, the ocean, is in distress. If you don't believe me, watch Sea Conspiracy on Netflix and you'll understand what I'm saying. So I found, you know, a new way. First of all, grasses, wheat grass, have tons of omega-3s. That's what the cows were originally supposed to eat. You know, they eat grass. They don't eat grain in the wild. You know, grass is their food, and that is full of omega-3s. We can do the same thing. And I've also found recently um, algae oil. Uh, we had it before from the ocean, but it's so full of toxins now. So now these new algae oil are grown in the desert, away from the ocean. There are no toxins, it's organic. And it's, it's equivalent to fish oil. It has, has DHA and EFA, I mean, my body feels it. It's amazing, it has no toxins. Because I can't really take the fish oil because, you know, just energetically my body won't. But it's also so full of toxins and nanoplastics and heavy metals. It's not worth it. But this algae oil is amazing. So the things that are positive to combine, why, why are mega so important? Well, not only are they important for your brain development and cognition, but they actually literally fight inflammation by increase by um, decreasing your prostaglandin levels they also help your immune system they help your brain health as i mentioned and they prevent chronic disease by decreasing your prostaglandin it's also important for stress would be turmeric because it reduces inflammation and a few other herbs might help too like boswellia but the the key ones are uh, the omega-3s and turmeric especially i think water soluble turmeric although all kinds are good the kinds that are not water soluble just go in your gut and stay in your gut that's a good thing but you want something to go into your system and the water soluble has the highest levels of free curcuminoids so that if you have inflammation and joint problems and things like that that's that's the kind you want also very interesting you know a lot of people who have sleep problems sleep you may have heard causes obesity and heart disease how does it do that well it causes inflammation when you don't sleep well and so if you can you know give people melatonin which can help them sleep it also reduces inflammation so that's a little nugget to store away and then people become less anxious. You know, the other thing about the gut, you know, the constellation 
of the probiotics in there. You have a hundred trillion um, probiotics in your body, which outnumber the number of cells. You know, I think it's 30 trillion cells in your body that, you know, can cause anxiety if you have the wrong ones. So you want to have the right constellation. So taking a good probiotic with the right bacteria and it's a good way to combat this inflammatory and stress. Another thing is just return to daily simple habits. So things that are routines that you like, maybe it's a cup of coffee, organic coffee in the morning, maybe it's um, going for a walk, maybe it's a meditation or a prayer or a visualization. All of these are ways to help have less stress and get back to the basics, if you will. Another key to unlocking longevity poten potential is, like I said, prayer, meditation, and visualization. I was gonna, you know, another thing is, you know, start a garden. There's nothing better for you than working in the garden. And if you don't have land, I understand it, but everybody can grow stuff. You can grow sprouts inside your house, even if you just have an apartment. You can grow, uh, they have these lettuce trees now, and you can grow and just pick off your lettuce tree and have dinner or make your, sal make your salad for lunch or whatever you're doing. I just love those, um, and I have a garden. But working in the garden gives you spore biotics. There's a guy that wrote a book called Eat Dirt, and that's like a reality, you know, those bugs in those in the soil are really good for us too. You know, that's how it all started. That's the soil that has not been sprayed with Monsanto or glyphosate because the foods that come from those soils that have been sprayed don't have the same nutrients because the soil has no bugs. So the soil, the bugs in the soil is what fixes the nitrogen makes the plant healthy and makes them nutrient dense. So the difference between a tomato grown conventionally and grown organically is huge or grown in your own backyard even more, even better. So I was gonna share with you a personal experience I had recently, which is kind of a big deal for me, but you know, what I'm really talking about mostly are those things that are chronically hung up in the lower part of your iceberg. This is was an acute thing, but it still causes the same physiologic effects. So I wanted to share that with you because I experienced it from the inside. So a few months ago or whatever, I was told I had cancer. And like immediately the next morning after I was told that, I got up out of bed and I couldn't walk. My knees, my elbows, every single joint in my body was flamed out. And I knew, I knew it to be fear from my subconscious. But look, it didn't, it didn't help just because I knew it. So I, I, I needed to deal with it. I needed to deal with it directly to face it. And so um, I saw Janet, Janet Montgomery, the hypnotherapist, and did a session with her. And she gave me a hypnotherapy session, which I, you know, I could have done a lot, enough work. I could have probably done a guided imagery myself, but it was very helpful and she's very good. And so this was my image. This is what happened. So the first thing she said, well, what does it look like? Well, it looked like seaweed. And I thought, well, seaweed's not a bad thing. And then she says, well, what's it saying to you? And I saw this lighted door, like this white door with a light behind it. She said, open the door. I'm going, okay. And then, and then I saw an image of coral. This was gonna float by, I'm okay, check. And then I saw an image of the Buddha float by. I said, okay, check, because it wasn't in my guided thing. But things come to you when you're in that state and they're very meaningful. And then she said, okay, um, so let's just run some light through your body. So I was just running light through my chakras. It was like a neon sign. 
violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, and I just kept doing that, and it, it was so amazing. And then she said, well, just bring light in through your head, and I saw pure sunlight just channeling in through my head. And then she said, send the light to where it needs it. And I sent the light to where I needed it, and it, it was a, turned into a rainbow. So the part of my mod body that was told it had cancer turned into a rainbow. And I thought, whoa, that's so beautiful. And then she said, okay, um, so one last helper is going to come. And what came to me was what I got in a, in a vision when I went one of my trips to the Amazon and studying with Antonio Moreno, my, my shaman. And I thought for sure I was, you know, we were questing for our totem that I would get the jaguar or the, you know, condor, some very powerful animal, but actually it was even more powerful that, than that. And three angels came. They were big and large and white. And they said, you've always had this totem. You've transformed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. And you can do that for yourself. And then I saw my totem and it was a big, gigantic, blue morpho butterfly as big as the room now they're big butterflies but when i went to the amazon they followed me everywhere and they're very shy and, and and elusive normally and my teacher would point at them point at the butterflies point at me and point at the take this picture out of his pocket that he always carried was our our lady guadalupe or mother mary of god so he was indicating that the ability to transform and create that i had it and you know, that I could share it with other people, but I could also use it for myself. And uh, so that was the end of the vision. And the following Monday, I hadn't heard from my doctor, which I thought was really strange. So I called him and I said, why hasn't he called me with my biopsy reports? And the lady, nice lady that answered for me said, well, I don't know, let me get your chart. So she gets my chart. And she proceeds to read me the pathology report. And I go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I didn't know if I wanted to hear it. I was still kind of pushing it back down into my subconscious. She says, you don't have cancer. And I, I was just like, oh, my God, I was stunned. And all of the symptoms in my body resolved within minutes. So that tells you how powerful is the subconscious. In, in triggering inflammatory cascade in your body, in making you sick, but I opened the door. I faced it, and it turned out okay for me. But even if it wasn't, you know, I would strap my boots on, have a good attitude, and conquer it as, as I have before. So, you know, it's just a demonstration, you know, to show you how important facing things head on is bringing them into the light, if you will, because this lighted door and as Don Miguel Ruiz says, open your jacket and let love as light shine on to your wounds. Because they're you know, it, it changes how you behave. You know, people come up to touch you and you go, don't touch me there <coughs> and you develop all these defense mechanisms, which you may not otherwise have. So facing your issues is your responsibility, is my responsibility to face mine and you to face yours and make us a better version of ourselves. And it's really actually very enlightening and liberating and healing because all the bad stuff goes away. <laughs> so let's do that together. So also I want to talk a little bit about um, the gut, although, like I said, you guys are pretty keen to the gut these days, but, you know, the gut flora, I, I mentioned there's a hundred trillion gut flora, and it's ten times the number of human cells we have, and they regulate a lot of body functions. So they create vitamins, they, uh, 70 percent of your immune system comes from your gut, they, uh, there's an incredible gut-brain connection, which Cameron Meyer wrote a couple of books about 
the uh, gut brain connection and the immune brain connection. Excellent books. Explains it well. And how they affect metabolism and weight. So it's important again to have the right bacteria and take care of your gut and your body. Because taking care of your gut and your body is taking care of your brain. They are connected. So eating the sad American diet, standard American diet with all of its chemicals and processed food and sugar is not what we want to do. That's not going to help your brain. It's going to hurt your brain. And you need the right amount of fiber because the fiber is what helps the, the probiotics or the bacteria live in your gut. It creates the short chain fatty acids which support your gut cells. So that's the way you need to eat, a lot of fiber, a lot of, you know, and not surprisingly, the right bacteria, right, right microbiome loves whole foods, mostly plants, and um, lots of olive oil, lots of fiber, and things that hurt the, the gut microbiome are things like antibiotics, acid reducers, so anybody that has a reflux that's on acid reducers by their doctor needs to, you know, reconsider that. There are natural things that can help that and even just gravitational things like raising your bed at night and putting it on, on uh, four inch blocks and not eating for four or five hours before bed. Those things can help tremendously and get off the drugs. NSAIDs will damage your gut. Think of your gut as your own little garden. Yes, garden outside, garden in your, your sprouts and your lettuce trees in your house, but also garden inside you. So always be focused when you eat. Is this good for my gut? Or is this not good for my gut? And if you do that and avoid the sad American diet, then your gut will be healthy. And all of those things I mentioned, like your immune system and your um, gut-brain connection and your neurotransmitters even, will become more healthy if you mind your garden. So, they don't, you know, pick foods that don't have artificial chemicals in them, that don't have the, you know, the glyphosates, that stuff is deadly, causes cancer, causes so, disrupts so many things in your body, neuroendocrine disruptor, just huge, not to mention the nanoplastics, the heavy metals and everything else that comes in our food if it's not organic and regeneratively grown. So what I would like to see going forward in the future is more people addressing the underneath part of their iceberg and then when they do that they become more healthy and they then see the things around them not just the things on the bottom of the so and they're healthy they then look around and they see the planet the name of my book is heal yourself heal the planet and, you know, it's really upon us. It's time to do that. So I want people to get their minds healthy, too. Because it's part of regeneration. Otherwise, you're just, you know, you have blinders on. And you're not seeing the whole big picture. Okay. Well, that's my message. And I, I really think that, you know, regenerative healing... For the person in the planet is where we need to point our sacred arrow right now. You know, climate change is the number one thing on the top of the list. But we need to get everybody healthy so that they can handle a little bit of that. And if people take small steps, and I talked about this in my last three talks, small steps bring great changes for mankind in this planet. Even if you just give up plastic bags. Or you turn totally to organic food. Look, that's what you need to heal yourself anyway. That's going to help the planet. You know, and, you know, things like that. You know, buy one less piece of clothing a year. 
It's like taking one car off the freeway for an entire year. There's so many things we can do. Repurpose our clothes. Wear old clothes. They even have uh, companies now that are making durable plant-based clothes. Now that's pretty fun. I want to find out the names of those. Also, I want to say hi to my godson, Rico, who got bit by a black, or actually a brown recluse spider last night. And I just want to tell him, you're going to be okay. You got a lot of good people around you. Just believe you're going to be okay, and you are going to be okay. I got your back. Your mama's got your back. And all of us are here for you. Okay? All right. I love you guys. Do you have any questions? Hi, Patty. Is that algae from the desert called iwi? Yes. It's called iwi. I have it in my office, too. And I have a good price. Any other questions? Oh, Cheryl, I'm sorry. We just sort of finished. I wish... But you know, you can watch this anytime. It'll be on my Instagram. Okay. So open your jackets. Let the love of light shine on your wounds and heal them. Bring them out for us all to see. Don't be scared. Get a good attitude, positive attitude. We can do this. You can do this. I did it. I told you my story. So let's do this together. Heal ourselves, heal the planet. Hi from Brazil. All right. Hi, Sonia. Thanks for the hearts. Any more questions? You guys can always DM me too, you know. And if you want a, um, a consultation, I do virtual. I do um, medical medical consults on the on the TV or on um, any kind of thing you want to do Facebook, Zoom, whatever is your fancy, or if you just want to do it on the phone, we'll work out the time zones. All right, bless you. Love you guys. Heal yourself, heal the planet. Bye-bye.